Hello, my name is Joel and I'm a landscape designer based in Toowoomba. Before we begin, I wish to acknowledge the traditional sovereign owners of this land, the Gaiabal, Jarawaya and Western Waka Waka people, who are the first farmers of Australia, and their sovereignty of this land has never been ceded. Today in this workshop we'll be making a wicking bed, or a self-watering raised garden bed, from things around the house. Thanks to Full Circle Farm, Youth Connect and Toowoomba Regional Council for making today's workshop possible. For this workshop you'll need a styrofoam box with a lid, some fabric, a tube or pipe, non-degradable containers such as plastic takeaway containers or soda bottles, and some potting mix. Wicking beds are great for people who don't have a lot of space or the ability to move around to garden. You can make them out of almost anything to suit your space. If you have a small sunny spot, even in your kitchen, you'll be amazed how much food you can produce. These are also super easy to look after, even if you think you've got a brown thumb, as they don't need to be watered very often at all. Wicking beds work by keeping a pool of water underneath your garden that gets pulled up to your plants through capillary action, sort of like how paper towels can suck up a whole spill just from touching a little bit. To get started on your own wicking bed, first take the lid of your box and trim it to about the same size and shape as the bottom of your container. This stops the soil getting into our reservoir where the water will get wicked up from. If too much soil gets through, it can sit under the water and become anaerobic or sour and stinky. So we need to make sure that we do a pretty good job of making this a nice snug fit. We also want to make a hole in the lid for our filling pipe to go through and carefully put a few more holes all around to help let the water through. Next we're going to find our containers. Traditional wicking beds usually use sand or gravel to help hold the soil up and away from the water, but most people don't have gravel in their house, so we're going to use containers instead. Whatever you use doesn't have to be very strong, but it shouldn't rot if it's left underwater. Now we can place our lid on top of the containers and spread the fabric over the lid, paying attention to any gaps where soil might get through. Thin material, like an old ruined t-shirt, is great, as it doesn't waste too much space, and it lets water through. That's the most important bit. Now we can add our soil and start thinking about what to plant. There's heaps of things you probably already have that can help kickstart your gardening journey. If you have pet birds, you could try sprouting some of their bird seed. My chooks love it. Also, some whole grains, pulses, and spices can be started just from quality dry goods from the grocer. Some of my favorites are mustard, fava or broad beans, green lentils, and everyone's favorite, the black-eyed peas. You can also get a lot of success from potatoes and sweet potatoes that have started eyeing you from the cupboard. Garlic and onions that have started sprouting will also produce delicious greens. Plants like to keep their roots nice and cool, and I find that grouping these boxes together can help to really reduce the stress on the plants on very hot days by shading a small patch of space underneath them. Don't forget that story about Jack and the Beanstalk. Plants love to grow up. Plants like passion fruit can usually be started quite easily if you can spare a few seeds from your fruit salad this summer, and they grow incredibly quickly when they have plenty of water like this. So there you have it. You've created your very own wicking bed. These are a real collectible toy. It's hard to stop at just one. To find out more about what I do, you can head to the links below, and we'd love to see what you've made. Share your creations using the hashtag homeprojecttr on social media.